everybody, welcome to Italy. We're close to Rome. If you saw this morning's video, if you haven't, there's gonna be a link in one of the corners up here. I've been lucky enough and I'm with Paul and Sam and James have been with us. Paul is behind the camera. Thank you for filming, Paul. We have been lucky enough to be drive. We have been lucky enough to test drive the brand new McLaren 720S today. I did a behind the scenes video of what it's like to get invited to one of these events. And now it is time for me to tell you about this car in detail, give you all the stats and tell you about what it's like to actually experience, drive, and whether this has lived up to all of our expectations. Let's kick it off with the interior of this car because 91% of the entire car is brand new. The only things they've kept the same are things like the rear reversing lights and little things they just didn't need to replace and where they couldn't remove any weight already. All the rest is basically brand new. All of the switch gear inside is made from aluminium and feels absolutely unbelievable to the touch. Not one spot is in plastic. It's all either Alcantara, carbon fiber, aluminium or leather. This particular car has the carbon seat. So if I hop in, they're not the easiest thing in the world to get into, but once you're in, they really hold you in nicely. P1 style steering wheel, which is full of Alcantara tire on carbon fiber looks absolutely fantastic these slightly tiny uh, shift paddles which I'm not a massive fan of but they do have this rocker system McLaren's have always had which are brilliant for texting while you're driving <laughs> which are brilliant for just being able to if you got your hand out the window you can shift with one hand it's fantastic and overall the inside of this car is just a massive step up compared to old generation McLaren's but mainly any of the com competitor cars. Things like the 488 feels completely outdated because in here you're properly in a spaceship. Some things are familiar. For example, the active panel here, ESC off aero button, which lifts the rear wing up, as well as all of your track normal and comfort settings. Little gadgets, for example, obviously the instrument cluster, which is all a screen now, but you can actually whack that down like this for when you're on track. So that only tells you your speed, gear, and revs and doesn't uh, obstruct your view too much. So when you're on track, you can properly aim for your apex and things like that. Little details that McLaren have come up with, which are absolutely fantastic. This is a brand new carbon fiber monocoque as well. So it actually goes all the way over the driver, unlike in 650 and 12C, where it was just sort of around the driver. And the stats on this car are absolutely unbelievable. 720 horsepower, 770 Newton meters of torque for only 1,283 kilos, that is dry weight. That means that this car actually does 2.8 to 60, that's seconds of course, which is just mind-bendingly fast and goes all the way to 212 miles an hour. So we're talking hypercar speed for this thing, but priced at around 220,000 pounds, starting price for that option. So let's say this is a quarter of a million pound car. That puts this car in supercar price with hypercar performance. <laughs> I don't usually do full-blown geek out reviews, so I got Paul with me who's gonna help me out Hello. today. A few things I also wanna to talk to you guys about are the specific spec on this car. Obviously, we mentioned the race seats, but this also has the 4,700 and a tiny bit more pound option of the sports exhaust. <laughs> It's got stealth pack, which means they're black as well. And you know how you can tell it's got a sports exhaust? Because of the little vents. The little on, vents yeah. on the exhaust pipe. It's also got on this car, this is not spec, this is on all five, uh, five I was about to say five, 40, <laughs> 720 S's. All the glass behind us, which yeah. gives you this 360 point of view, which is absolutely stunning. You've just been driving this car and you're a bit taller than me, so I'm gonna Very move it forward. Ah, shall we do a loud start? Yes. So let me crack the window. It's got this setting, so if you have ignition on, you press active panel and put track and track, it will start the car and give it two big bangs after you start it. So, let's give it a go. Battery 45 days. I'm good. <laughs> oh, that looked better last time. Oh. Why did that? Key not found within the vehicle. <laughs> oh, God. Loud start. Let's open your window as well. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's cool that. This being one of my first proper reviews, you're gonna have to help me and tell me about your opinion on this car as well a little bit because me you've been driving it around you, that's you. First things first, let's not muck about. Supercar price. And when we say hypercar fast, I mean we mean it. Yeah, you yes. can 
forget full 5A. You can even forget things like your Horica yeah. and things like that. This is in a different league. In a straight line, whilst braking and round corners is just completely insane. They haven't just upped the acceleration. Oh God, is it straight? Yeah. Just up the acceleration, they've had to up the braking and everything that goes with that, yeah, to make sure that the entire performance of this car is, is high. It's just, yeah, exactly. Well, because the brakes are just unreal, they're lighter and smaller <laughs> than they were on 650S. And as you said in your video, Paul, we need to think of this car as a 650S replacement and not a 675 LT replacement because. Even though it blows the 675 LT out of the park in terms of performance, it is more based on being a replacement for the 650 and being usable. And that's where things such as the 360 view come into play because this car is truly, effectively, a daily hypercar. And that's something I didn't think I'd be saying or seeing or experiencing for at least another few years. I'm enjoying this. Are you okay? I was just thinking. It would have been a lot more funnier yeah. if for my video I had to review the car whilst you were doing this because it would be impossible. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It must be absolutely terrifying for you. But yeah, this car from one point to another blows everything out of the water unless you're spending over a million pounds. So you can hear maybe the sports exhaust doing its thing in the background. <laughs> I've been 
lucky enough to drive quite a few supercars. No hypercars. You've driven the last Ferrari. Jealous about, by the way. I want to talk about a few things in terms of how it handles. Now then, what I can't believe is just how stable this car is. How much grip it has to all this new aerodynamic work. They've got all sorts of slits and slats and gaps all over the place in this body, which basically work together like an orchestra to fuel air through the entire body of this car and push it and stick it to the ground. Certainly does its job really well because you feel like you're driving on train tracks. I mean, look at that. That's yeah. just effortless. In any other car, you'd be off. Well, not any other car, but in a lot of other cars, you'd be off the road there. It's the body. The entire body styling is developed for dynamic perfection yeah and what that does is it gives the driver so much confidence yeah that you can point it in any direction at any speed on any corner and it will make it out the other side it's incredible it's, it's one of those cars it's like it's like a tech nerd you'll yeah. look at this car give it some sort of impossible task and it'll look at you and just go yeah, I right. can do that yeah. Yeah. all right I don't think I've ever gotten into a car that you a have to adjust to so much but B that fills you with confidence so quickly yeah so you have to recalibrate your brain to the speeds that this thing will do and carry through. It's like I remember watching Richard Hammond talking about Formula One driving and he was saying that when you come out of a corner you can't even calibrate as to how fast you're going as soon as you put your foot down and you can brake later, turn in, turn in sooner, accelerate earlier than in any other car and I feel like we're using maybe 15% of the potential of this car and as you said what would be fascinating would be to go around track in it yeah, to be yeah. able to properly see what it's doing which sadly we're not allowed to do today so let's use these roads as a track as a race track, track yes. <laughs> uh, strict speed limits and mini police yes and we are abiding those speed limits yeah very carefully this seems like an appropriate time to also talk about the usability of this car because that's one thing they really tried to aim for is making this car as usable as possible for everyday usage. We're in a tiny little Italian village right now, and I'm, I, as you said, I don't have sweaty palms or anything like that. It's not, well, he says, as he squeezes past yeah. these cars, it's not absolutely terrifying to drive around, and it being one of these dual clutch semi-automatic gearboxes, um, you don't get any judderiness, the clutch is very easy, and you're not finding yourself constantly fighting with the car just to do simple things like navigating around the town. Super easy to see out of. One thing it doesn't have is a reversing camera, which yeah. does surprise me for a car they've angled so much towards sort of daily usability. And yeah, daily hypercar, it's unreal, isn't it? Because you could drive this around town, pop to the shops, and then you could floor it home. I don't think I've ever driven a car with this wide of a breadth of ability. Yeah. A car that can perform this well and be this sort of impressive when you're flooring it and yet be so good around town it's the, word, um, the words breadth of ability and it's really what i think they angle this car towards and it is so easy to fall into the gap of saying it doesn't have as much drama as the lt and you're like yeah but the lt version of this will come and when that comes man oh man will that be impressive because yeah all they need to do really they don't really need to they don't need to improve performance they just need to add drama to this car yeah because that's the main overriding thing which detracts from the experience of this and i really respect this car the word respect is something no one can deny i don't think anyone can get into this car and say it's not a good road car in fact i think this is potentially as a mechanical machine the best car on sale right now yeah and potentially and these are big words one of if not the best car ever made in terms of the ability that it has and yeah. it being a machine and it being a car yeah. now, i'm not saying it's my favorite car i'd much rather have like a pagani zondo or something over this because of the emotional side that that has but as a machine it is absolutely unbelievable and very hard to floor mechanically emotionally is where it loses out potentially because it's so hard to get something so mechanically good and still keep the emotion because you've got things like the turbos um, and one thing I'm quite disappointed about is the engine so it being a new four liter engine I was expecting a bigger change it feels sounds and sort of behaves in a similar way to the other ones in that suction way that delivers its power in such a linear way it's not just like boom here have all the power it's kind of like here we'll tickle you a bit with some and then give you the full bananas at the end yeah yeah um, that's a, yeah it's a very good point actually so it doesn't the way the engine behaves 
waves, sounds and everything really doesn't feel as different as, certainly doesn't feel 41% different. Yeah. In, whereas in fact, it really is. The other thing that you mentioned, which I thought was bang on, about the respect that you have for this car, but you can't quite put it in a category, yeah. is you were saying that this is the hypercar version of the Nissan GTR. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I really do stand by that because a Nissan GTR is one of those cars that everyone respects and you can't deny it's a brilliant car and the performance of it is just unbelievable, but it lacks that emotion yeah. and it just doesn't have that. It's is so it outside, hard. It doesn't fit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so hard to put your finger on it. Yeah. Um, you can't describe it. If you know what I'm talking about, you. I guess James Mace called it the fizzle, didn't he? Back in top here. Yeah, he, called he, it doesn't the, he doesn't get the fizz. Um, and this car isn't giving me the fizz. <laughs> um, and it's something that's so important. And, it's, and this is, effect, you know, this is, you, it, I don't want to compare it anyway because it's so different to a GTR. But it's used the sort of theory and mindset of the GTR and just put it on steroids and stretched it so much further. So it's a total number spec sheet car that just can't be beaten on paper, really, offering this sort of performance for this price. But it doesn't really smile as much as it should for 250,000 pounds. I mean, how many orders are they had? It's like, what, 1,200 or 1,400 orders? 1,400 orders. the entire year, or the entire 12 months in terms of allocations for 720s is sold out. It's sold out. Because it They're is going doing to be great. a crazily, crazily popular car. Yeah. As it should be. As I yeah. completely agree. They should sell, like, hotcakes, these things, because they deserve to. They are an absolute masterpiece of the engineering. I also think... More about us and what we're looking for in a supercar than uh, than it does about the car. Because if you have loved McLarens in the past and if you are really into just numbers, performance, and you don't really care about the noise and you want to get round maybe slightly more discreetly or things like that, and you're, you're not a fan of the whole Aventador approach or yeah, Lamborghini approach, this is the car for you. And I don't think there's any car that will do that better for you. If you want your dream car to be the car that you're driving knowing that you are going to annihilate anyone in a straight line or around a track. Yeah. This is the car. Exactly. It's it's so hard to describe this experience, isn't it? Because it, with other cars, you either love it, hate it. I, I like this car a lot. I really respect it. But there's something missing. And that so is, I new. believe, yeah, <laughs> I believe very, very where the LT line could come in. And if they add that something to the LT, then that's gonna I be like what one. you said, like they don't need to enhance the performance. They don't need they to. They just no. need to add drama. Yeah, I mean, they didn't need to even enhance the performance. The problem is, on, uh, McLaren have never been a manufacturer about drama. Yeah. So if they went down the route of we're gonna add drama and they don't deliver it, yeah, then, then they're in trouble, yeah. It's such an interesting dilemma. But if you are wondering what the McLaren 720S is like to drive and experience, then do not you go for the overtake. <laughs> no, I'm not going, I'm not going. <laughs> if you ever get the chance and are lucky enough to drive one of these or get offered the opportunity to drive one, you really should, because it's an experience like no other. Because you will there's really not much else that will offer you this sort of acceleration and performance. And it's unbelievable. I hope this has made some sort of sense to you guys about how we're trying to unfold this experience in our head. It's a hard one. We we were going to read many thesauruses before doing this review because we just don't really have the words to explain, explain what we're experiencing. But overall, as a car, the McLaren 720S is absolutely unbelievable. A big, big well done to the engineers and everyone at McLaren for bringing this together. Thank you so much for watching guys. As per usual, it's been an absolute pleasure coming on this drive. Thank you so much Paul as well for helping me with this review no and with the filming. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Cheers, bye-bye. Hey, Quick cap saying it, Saturday in the mouth.